Hey guys, Logan Kirk here with RockyMountainMysticMan.com. In today's video, we're going to be covering something that is very, very important. You see, there's something that has been on my mind, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. And this has to do with something called an EMP. That's right. If you guys don't know what EMPs are, you should look it up and educate yourselves because it's a serious, real deal. Now, here's why EMPs are on my mind. You know, it's because right now, and we have for years, now I served overseas in Korea, stationed at Camp Casey, and I know about the North Koreans. They are an interesting breed of people. Now, their leader, and this isn't the only nation that I'm worried about, but they are threatening us with nuclear weapons. Now, in the United States of America, it's only gonna take three nuclear weapons in an airburst about 250 miles over the surface. One placed over the west coast, one over the midwest, one on the east, to plunge us into an indefinite amount of time and into a grid down situation. Now this is important that we realize that's not something we want to have happen. Grid down is worst nightmare because so many people, what they have is this major reliance because they're domesticated, all right? A lot of us are domesticated to a point where electricity is our whole life, all right? I mean, I like it. That's how I shoot these videos for you guys. But the thing is, when an EMP goes off and we have that, I mean, literally think about it. It only takes less than a second for all that gamma radiation to hit the stratosphere and bounce back down and knock out everything, all right? But that's not it, you guys. It's not just the tactical nuclear weapons we have to worry about, right? And first off, too, I wanna to let you know, I don't think it's gonna be China or Russia that does that to us if that was the way that it happened because, well, we have what's called mutually assured destruction in place, right? They launch their nukes, we launch ours before they reach here and whole world goes to crap. Well. I mean, I think a lot of these more mature societies, if you can call them mature societies, at least the ones that have these tactical nuclear weapons, they don't want that to happen. They don't want that kind of thing to, to go on because they love infrastructure. They don't want to inherit a, a dead world, right? I mean, I know I don't, and I don't think they do either, and that's why we survived the Cold War. But what I'm more concerned with is... What I'm more concerned with is a CME. That's right, our friend Mr. Sun sending off a coronal mass ejection that's going to basically uh, cause the same thing. Uh, you know, because if that thing hits us, and, and here's the thing people, the Sun is sending off CMEs on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, but we're like a little tiny ball floating around that big old Sun, right? My head's the Sun, we're like this little tiny speck out here, and that CME's gotta hit us dead on. now. The Earth gets hit by these things every 100 to 150 years, okay? We, we know this. We know this because of science. Well, here's the thing. Does anybody know about the Carrington event back in 1859? Okay, because that, that was the last time we got hit by a CME. And I'll tell you what, the reports that I've read from the Carrington event, they're, they're pretty damn special. Oh, there's a little lizard right there. Because they talk about how you know, telegraph wires were on fire. They were melting out of the sky. The telegraph wires were lit up, melting down. The railroad ties for the railroad were catching on fire because of the conductivity of the railroad itself. And you know, I'm telling you, that is crazy. They didn't have nearly the infrastructure built up like we do today, do they? Right, so imagine all the things that we have built out of steel becoming electrified. All your little electronics, anything that's in, not inside of a Faraday cage or a Faraday bag is useless to you. Now, you might be saying, Logan, how do I, how do I build a Faraday cage? Because you know, I've educated myself now and I'm worried about it. Well, I'm telling you, everybody has, well, not everybody, most people have a Faraday cage already in their home. It's called a microwave. Now. You shouldn't be using that microwave in the first place to cook your food or anything because it kills off all the nutrients, right? So you might as well stick it in your garage with a cell phone, one of the hand crank radios, all kinds of stuff that need to be protected from a CME or an EMP from a nuke or whatever. 
these things are real. And this is also why mountain men, you guys, we're prone to just survive this stuff because I'm telling you, in a grid down situation, only those that are prepared or already living as if the grid is down are going to be able to survive. So I ask you, challenge yourself to grid proof your life, all right? Because here's the thing, when the grid goes down and it's, it's that, that's the ultimate SHTF, isn't it? What we gotta be worried about is all of that golden horde, those people that are gonna be coming who are unprepared, who wanna get in on what we have, right? And we don't wanna lose our compassion and our empathy, right? And our, our, even our sympathy for people because we wanna be able to help them. We're not gonna be able to help everybody, but I'm not gonna be like, hey, you know, I told you, Logan told you, you better start preparing for this stuff because it's gonna happen. And when you show up on my doorstep, I'm not gonna help you. No, that's not what's gonna happen. But I challenge you to get to my doorstep after SHTF happens because I'm telling you, without your car to drive you to my neighbor to my neighborhood, my neck of the woods, you're not going to be able to get here within a week. All right. Being a mountain man is important. Having these wildlife skills and survival skills is important. Being able to feed your family and support your family off of the wild land is important. And that's what I promote. That's what I want for everyone. Because I believe that community is important. When an SHTF situation, oh, <laughs> when an SHTF situation happens, it's community that's gonna save us. All right, it's you helping that doctor down the street. It's you helping that teacher and the nurses and the people around you. That's what's gonna bring us out of those dark ages because I'm telling you when the grid goes down, it's gonna be dark for decades. Well, I'm a little tired. It's been a long day up here on the mountain and uh, I'm going on a little rant, but just wanted to share my thoughts on EMPs with you. And uh, I wanna know what you think about them. You know, do you put your mind towards EMPs? Um, as an SHTF situation, is it something you prepare for? Because it is something I prepare for. I mean, I've got stuff that's protected in Faraday devices because if that happens, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you have a generator. That thing's not going to work. The car's not going to work. All these things are not going to work. Things are going to fry. Your entire house is going to fry. If, say, you did have a generator inside of a Faraday cage and you brought it out afterwards, I not going to do you any good because all the wires in your house are going to fry. Your house might catch fire. Okay, it's going to take forever for us to rebuild from that kind of a situation. So anyways, thanks for listening to my rant. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. And if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, don't forget, you guys, that notifications bell is important because that's the only way you can hear more crazy stuff from a mountain man like me. All right, well, I'm heading back down to the cabin. I need some, need some more agua. I'll see you guys soon.